Digital Media Hub to obtain video content, okay? And also don't forget the locker rooms are open. Okay, we are ready to begin our news conference with the uh, South Regional Champions, the Wolfpack of NC State, Coach Kevin Keats, and uh, Coach brought three student athletes, DJ Horn, Michael O'Connell, and DJ Burns, Jr. We will go for an opening question for Coach and then move our questions to the three guys. Who wants to ask Coach the first question? Here on uh, Coach's right, toward the front, Chris, we need the, at the athletic for coach. What does it mean to do something that hasn't been done since uh, Jim Valvano? Well, first of all, I, I want to say this, man. God is good. Um, the, these young men um, in the locker room from day one have kind of believed in everything that I preached to them and everything that they talked about. You know, at the beginning of the year, we, talk, we talked about what are your goals. And I think to a man, everyone said, we want to win the ACC. Check. Uh, what's your other goal is obviously, you know, go on and compete for a national championship. And we're still alive for that opportunity. Uh, means a lot. You know, I, I think, you know, our school deserves it. Um, you know, our players have really worked hard. Um, the fans deserve it. Uh, we've done a really good job. Um, you know, when I say we, I mean, I always say we. I'm saying these young men in the locker room through all of the adversity that we have went through, ups and downs of winning games, losing games. Um, they never lost their faith and stayed together, and it, it means a lot. It really does. And by the way, um, congratulations to our um, women's team, too, for making the Final Four. That's really special. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to questions for uh, DJ, DJ, and Michael. First one for the guys on the inside aisle on your right. Brett Friedlander, Saturday Road. This is for Michael in particular, but the other two players, yeah, I'd like you to ch ch chime in on this as well. Um, after the technical foul, it really kind of felt like the momentum had shifted. And then Middlebrooks got the steal. Michael, you hit the three, and then there was the foul. How big of a, uh, of a response was that? And how did you guys manage to keep your composure while all that was going on? Yeah, the, I think the biggest thing was just sticking together. Obviously, things aren't going to always go well or things are going to go wrong, but for us to stick together through the tough times and even the great times is going to be huge. Um, obviously, Ben made a great play. We, it would have shifted momentum pretty quickly, which has definitely helped with, for us to just, you know, keep the lead and you know, just keep us going. DJ Burns? Uh, I'd say um, in tough situations, you rise to the level of your training, and um, our coaches well prepared us. Uh, yeah, I just piggyback off these guys. Um, I just kind of rely on my work, um, trust the game plan, and, um, you know, fall back on my teammates, too, to help lift me up. Okay, let's move on the right toward the front. Kabu with CBS Sports. Uh, it's for DJ. Uh, I noticed you were the first person uh, from NC State's team to lead the team out of the locker room, and you were literally skipping uh, before the game even started. Then late in the game, you skipped out. Uh, to the bench as you checked out. Where does DJ Burns' joy come from? Uh, just, I don't know. I, mean, I guess it's how I was raised. You know, I was raised in a happy environment. I try to take that with me everywhere I go. Let's move to the left now. Here. Andre Johnson, Making Headline News. DJ Burns, this is question is for you. Uh, when you picked up that, that second foul in the first half, what, what went through your mind because Obviously, it was early in the game, and I knew that uh, everybody pretty much knew that you was getting ready to come out to, to take a seat. But what went through your mind? It seemed like that, that did something for your game at that point because you was in a complete zone afterward. Well, honestly, I'm just, I wouldn't really say I wasn't, I wasn't too worried about it, but um, more than a halftime, I just knew that um, the main thing I was thinking, honestly, was that you know, I missed a few shots towards the end, so they weren't going to double to me in the second half. So I just decided that when I came back in to take advantage. Next question by the uh, extreme right by the curtain. Jalen Gilkey, WFMY News 2 in Greensboro. Uh, just real quick, fellas, how cool is it to be in the Final Four, but then also have the women's team in the Final Four? First program to do that since 2014, UConn. They both went on to win the national championship. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but was watching Isaiah and the girls earlier today really 
a motivator for you guys to get out there and just say, we're going we're gonna to do this as an athletic and basketball program? Who was that for again? Okay, let's go with DJ Horn first. I would just say, yeah, it's definitely big for our program. Uh, seeing the girls, you know, have success definitely motivates us. Um, but uh, I would just say we're kind of worried about our team right now and uh, just trying to make the best of what we got going right now and taking it each game at a time. Okay, let's go to Zoom for our next question. Okay, we have a question from Dan. Dan, if you would unmute yourself, state your name and affiliation, and then proceed, proceed with your question. Dan Tortoro, Wake Up Call, DT.com. This is for all the student athletes. Just what you can say about the fact that basketball is a brotherhood and what it's been like to be on this run with each other and to believe in each other from the inside out, no matter what the outside said. Start with DJ Burns and then work our way back down the table. Uh, I say um, basketball is a sport that just, you know, naturally brings people together. You know, um, all of my life, long friends, I'd say about 95% of them are basketball players. And, you know, um, man, I still communicate with people I played AAU with in eighth grade, man. So um, basketball is just something that just always brings people together. That's why we love it. Yeah, I think building off that, it's, I think it's pretty cool that none of us played together last year. And, you know, since the beginning of the season, we've been able to build this chemistry and build this bond and friendship, especially off the court. Um, and like pretty much what he said, it just, it just brings you together. You all have a common goal, and that's winning. And you just want to f figure out a way to do it together. And I think as you're trying to go through that process, you just grow closer together. Oh, yeah, I definitely agree with them, too. Um, I just think that, you know, that's the beauty of basketball. You know, you can build these connections, build these memories. And uh, I just say personally, I'm just glad to be doing this for my last, last little year of basket college basketball. OK, let's move to the left, middle of the room. Sydney Staples, D210 Sports. Um, if you guys, all of you players, if all of you could talk to your 10-year-old self, what would you tell them? And that DJ, bro, you want DJ Burns to answer that? All of them? All, of them? all, of them? all right, well, we'll go back to DJ Burns. DJ again. Burns, what would you say to your 10-year-old <laughs> self? I'm, I want to know that myself. Uh, at this point, I would tell him, um, don't change anything, man. Um, just continue to be yourself. It's going to work out. <laughs> Generic answer. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I was actually going to say it too, just stick with the process. Obviously, when I was younger, you know, there was times you didn't want to go work out or, you know, play sports. You just wanted to hang out with your friends or whatever. But, you know, my parents kept on me and made sure I was working out. And just obviously I'm glad I did that. It definitely helped me get here and to where I am to, at this moment. So, um, yeah, just, just stick with it and just try to enjoy, enjoy it along the way. I mean, that's really the biggest thing. And DJ? And I would just tell my, my 10 year old self to just stay down and uh, just understand that, you know, everybody has their moment and, um, you know, it comes at different times um, in different shapes and forms and fashions. Let's move back to the right. Chris Vanini, The Athletic for all three of you guys. Uh, what does Coach Keats mean to you and, and how did he have you guys prepared for this? I'll tell you this one. Um, I would say, um, man. He um, kind of, you know, changed the trajectory of what, what I had going on, you know. Um, I was up at Winthrop and, you know, didn't really know how this was going to play out when I put my name in that portal. And um, honestly, I didn't even at first think I was coming here. So for this, it's just an absolute blessing. And I think that that man needs a lot more respect still. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can for sure build off that. He's he's had confidence in me since day one, since, you know, he contacted me when I in the portal. And just to play for a coach like this who just, you know, has faith in you and you know push you to be your best every day you know when you're making mistakes he holds you accountable and then when you're doing well he'll, you know compliment you and keep pushing to do better so I mean it it means the world to be playing for him and you know it just it makes the game so much easier when you're out there um you know I agree with everything they said and uh on my little piece I would just say uh you know coach gave me an opportunity to come back home and, and play basketball and uh the confidence that he instills in me every day uh, allows me to go out there and do what I do and um, just to know that, you know, all the, the ups and downs we had in our season and when it, it could have been easy to quit, I felt like he was the main one that kind of kept us all together and kept, the, you know, the outlook on our whole season uh, very positive and uh, gave us a lot of confidence going into that ACC tournament. Final question so our student athletes here on the left up front. Uh, Don Finale at Duke Chronicle. Michael, this one's for you. I'm sure that Virginia shot that buzzer beater feels like a lifetime ago, but that's one of the biggest moments of this run. And without that, you guys may never be here. Can you talk about some of the individual moments that have made this really amazing run possible? 
Who was that for again? I missed that. Michael. Michael. Okay, Michael. Yeah, I think I think just throughout this journey, you know, everyone's made huge plays. Whether it's just in the moment, it might not seem pretty big. Whether it's just a deflection or a steal, but it changes the, you know the trajectory of our run or the game. Um, one one play I always look back to is his block last game off the backboard. I thought that was huge, and he comes down and has an N one three. So I mean, there's just plays consistently being made by everyone that you know it might not be covered or it might not be in the stat sheet or it might not be all over you know social media, but everyone's been making huge plays down this run, and that's why I think. I think that's why we're getting these wins, and it's been big for us. You know, obviously he's playing unbelievable. But I mean, both these dudes are. Mo has been killing it. Casey, ev like everyone who's been playing, has had such a big impact. And um, when you have a lot of guys coming on the court and just contributing right away, I mean, it's you can't really pick the special moment when they're. All, I mean, they're all special in their own way. All right, that completes our time frame for our student athletes. Uh, DJ, DJ, and Michael, we'll let you return to the locker room. I know the locker room is still open for additional interviews. Uh, we want to say congratulations on winning the South Regional and um, have fun in Phoenix. That's my old stopping ground. So have a good time out there. All right, Michael. When you Bring go back the in the championship, you right? go back in the locker room, Michael. Tell all the bigs you all rebounded them. You gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will finish out our news conference with Coach Keats, and I think our first question is going to come over <laughs> on the left aisle. Coach Drew Jackson making headline news. Is this by far your best? coaching job you know it, it I've had some really good teams and you know for us I would say something about all of my teams are really special these guys are so special I, I think what is it nine now nine elimination games or you go home um, they're tremendous like you ought to you ought to see us every day uh, they make it easy for me to wake up every morning and, and come to practice and work hard with them because of who they are as personalities. I would say this, I've learned more basketball from these guys than I learned in my entire career uh, because they know how to work. They're great people. They work hard. And so, and, you know, it's hard to say if it's my best. You know, you'd have to ask somebody else. But I, I'm sure having a lot of fun with this group. Okay, now on the other aisle. Kevin, I'm sure that tomorrow morning you're going to start scouting Purdue and get ready. But in the moment now, uh, have you had a chance to pinch yourself and just kind of realize what has happened over these last three weeks? I haven't. I mean, it's I'm sitting here and I'm I'm blessed to be here. And 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 I'll tell you what we did. We we broken the postseason up into different segments. So when we left to go to D.C., we said we wanted to win D.C. We won D.C. Then we, we went to Pitt. We said we want to win Pitt. And now, obviously, in Texas, we won Texas. And it is, um, you know, it gets to a point, you know, when you're winning games and like the way we are, where you expect to win. And I think our guys now are expecting to win. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's beautiful to watch. Like, I, you know, our defense has been tremendous down the stretch. It's been so great. You know, and at the beginning of the – at the halftime, we talked about that it was 26 to – I mean, 27 to 21, the difference in the game, neither team was scoring. They had taken um, nine three, I mean, nine free throws. We had taken three. We made two. They made nine. And we, I talked about, hey, if you can come out and duplicate your defense in the second half, we will find a way to score. And we were great in the second half, too. So, I mean, it's a miracle run. Uh, but we're not surprised. Like, we don't, we don't go in. We didn't come into this tournament and said, hey, let's just try to be here. We came here to win it, and we did. So we, now we got to move on to our next stage. Okay, let's go to Zoom. Okay, we have another question from Dan. Dan, please unmute yourself and go ahead with your question. Wake up call, DT.com. Of course, Dan Tortora again. Coach, just what the biggest blessing has been throughout this season with this team specifically as you reflect on this whole run that you've had and the journey you've had, just the blessing that you've had with these student athletes? I think the biggest blessing is they, they've stayed true to who they are. And, you know, obviously, you know, when you go through a season, there are going to be a lot of ups and downs. Um, number one, you got to win every type of game to advance. Um, but there are going to be some emotions. Like we, we started off five and one in our conference. We lost our last four games. Um, there are going to always be some adversity. And I, I, you know, what these guys have strung together games. They've never wavered in their belief. Uh, they've stuck together. Um, we go by our art. Um, I talk about that all the time. A R T T, accountability, relentless, toughness, and together. And when things go bad. 
we we lean on that. And I mean, I can't say enough about them. Um, you you ought to see them. You know, the, these guys are really they're really locked in. They're really um, a close knit bunch. Uh, the memories that they're creating are memories that's going to last a lifetime, and and that's what makes it really special. Those are the blessings that I see. Okay, in front of the TV camera, you, me, or you, right. you're All close right. enough to the TV camera. Oh, right. I didn't um, know either. I was like, who is he? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay, but I'll take it anyway. Hey, uh, Kevin, I have a couple questions. I'm Adam Teichman from ESPN. Uh, you said a minute ago, uh, I, I, you can tell your guys are now expecting to win. H how can you tell that? What tells you that? And again, I'll have a follow up as well. Yeah, the focus. I mean, you know, I just. You know, we're, it's weird because having a day in between is almost seems like it's um, something wrong because we're so into what we did in the ACC tournament, you know, winning five games in five days. But they're locked in. They understand. It's like I think a couple people asked me that were, you know, around the team that hadn't been around the team is, are you guys always that loose? And we are. Um, you know, these guys, I, I've learned more new rap songs than I ever thought I could imagine. But I, as I said the last time is, you know, we, we mix it up now. We play a lot of gospel music, too, which um, they scream just as loud when they do that part of, which I'm glad that they know those songs. But it's, um, it's a loose bunch. Um, they, they believe in one another. They trust in one another. We had some adversity in this game, and it was at times you thought Duke had the momentum and we could have, you know, folded a little bit, but we absolutely didn't. Um, DJ and DJ, I think, had 35, 36 points together in the second half, and you guys shot what? 70-some percent in the second half. Anything at halftime tell you you could have that kind of offensive turnaround, particularly with those two guys? Yeah, we just we, – we missed a lot of chippies in the first half. I mean, we left a lot of things on the rim. Um, I, I, I counted myself about five, um, you know, missed layups. And my assistant coaches were losing. I was like, relax. Uh, we're going to be fine. It's not like that they're setting the world on fire offensively either. And so we, as I talked about, we talked about defending. We talked about, you know, staying, you know, to the, you know, to the scouting report and the ball will go in in the second half. You know, one of the things, DJ, DJ Burns didn't play a lot because he got his second foul. And so we knew we had a, a advantage, you know, throwing the ball inside to him. They decided, which some teams do, not to, to double team him. And obviously he shot 13 for 19 and had 29 points. Almost out of time for Coach. We'll take one last question on Coach's right up front. Kablin with CBS Sports. Uh, Kevin, what did you see in DJ Burns when you recruited him from Winter? Obviously, beyond the box score, and how has he impacted this team? Because obviously, 29 points tonight. He's been productive, but I think his impact goes maybe beyond the box score. Well, that's that's the, that's one of the better questions I've had asked in a long time because typically I play with two forwards, you know, uh, a Ben and a Mo together. But when DJ hit the transfer portal, I was like, man, I'm a, I got changed. I mean, this, I mean, he changed me. You know, like I've, I've never thrown the ball inside as much as I have in the last couple of years. Um, great touch, um, you know, great footwork. Uh, last year, one of his issues, he could pass the ball, but he didn't have a great, to, a great assist to turnover ratio. And now he's doing that. Um, it's changed the way I look at you know, post guys now. Like, it's probably only three of those in the country, and I know we're going to play a really good one, you know, next week at some point. Uh, but I'm looking for some more guys that I can, you know, throw the ball inside. And I now found out that I can have a mix of throwing the ball to a post guy and having guard play. And so, I mean, tremendous personality. You know, I, I've, I've recruited him since he was basically when he went to Tennessee out of high school. And obviously, when he went into the portal, we looked at everybody in the portal, and we needed some size. And um, he fits the bill. And I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's on my team. I don't know how you guard him. You know, I'm so I'm I'm excited, and I hope nobody figures that out. Yeah. Okay, Coach. Thank you so much. Way Thanks, to guys. go. Congratulations. Thank you. It's good to be with you this week, Coach. Good luck. Thank you for everything. Um,